Previously, we looked at the tyre rules, at how tyres wear, and the different types of corners we'll see at tracks around the world. One of the most requested topics I've been asked to cover is how Pirelli choose which three compounds to bring to each race. This is naturally quite a complicated process, but I'll try and lay out the basics for you here. As a reminder, there are now seven, previously five, dry compounds that Pirelli can bring to a race. The softest of these compounds are grippier, have a shorter lifespan, and have a lower ideal operating temperature. And naturally, the harder the tyre, the less grippy the rubber, the longer the lifespan, and the higher the ideal operating temperature. Pirelli will bring three compounds to each race, and we want to look at how they decide which ones to bring. Let's remember that Pirelli make their choices based on a core philosophy behind what part the tyre should play in a race. At the moment, their philosophy is around encouraging two-stop races with a consistent tyre degradation. This is the full range of tyre compounds Pirelli selected through 2017. We'll come back to this diagram later in the video once we've gained a bit more understanding. So there are two main factors that govern Pirelli's choice of tyre compound, track qualities and what I'm going to loosely label environmental factors. Overwhelmingly, the choice comes down to the qualities of the track, so let's look at those. We'll start with the track layout. How many slow corners does it have? How many fast corners? Does it have a lot of straights? Slow corners put a lot less energy into the tyres than fast corners. The main reason for this is that when a car is at higher speeds, it's able to demand a lot more lateral friction from the tyres to pull it into the corner. This is because at higher speeds, the car has a lot higher downforce, and this maximum non-sliding frictional force is directly proportional to the amount of force pushing down on the tyres. That was a little aside into frictional forces there, but the takeaway is that slow corners put less energy into the tyres. This means that tyres will be slower to heat up if the corners of a track tend to be slower. In this case, we may want to consider a tyre compound with a lower operating temperature. Of course, the reverse is true for high-speed corners, which energise the tyres a lot. Tracks with a lot of high-speed corners will encourage a high tyre temperature, which are best handled by harder tyres. Similarly, straights give the tyres a lot of respite and time to cool down. If there are a lot of straights, or a couple of very long straights, this might encourage Pirelli to head in a softer direction, as the tyres are naturally allowed a breather after taking a pounding through the corners. A track with very few straights might encourage a harder compound, as the tyre is allowed little recovery time between corners. Now let's consider the track's surface. There are two qualities of the track surface that affect its relationship with the tyres, its macro roughness and its micro roughness. To understand these, we first need to consider what the track surface is. Asphalt, or tarmac, is a mixture of bitumen and ground-up stones. Bitumen is a tar-like substance made from a mixture of oily hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are what make up oils, petrols, diesels, plastics, tars, etc. Mixed as bitumen, it's a sticky, syrupy substance that sets under normal temperatures. This is mixed with ground-up stones and gravel, known as aggregate, and laid out onto the track surface. If you look at the surface of a road or track, you can see the aggregate, the tiny mashed-up stones set in the sea of black bitumen. It's this texture of stones that make up the macro roughness of the track surface. The size, shape, spacing and sharpness of the stones can make for a very rough or much smoother surface. Freshly laid asphalt can often be much rougher in its first few years of service. The aggregate will have a lot of pointy edges and won't necessarily lay evenly across the surface of the track. This macro roughness makes the track more grippy, but much more aggressive in how it wears the tyres. A track resurfacing requires special attention from Pirelli, as it may call for a harder wearing tyre compound. Over time, possibly many years, depending on how often the track is used, repeated wear will eventually start to smooth out the raw aggregate over time. In fact, eventually, track use will start to wear the surface level bitumen clean from the aggregate, reducing the grip significantly. Fresh asphalt is also loaded with oils when first laid and is more sensitive to temperature change. Rising temperatures will cause some of the oils in the bitumen to leak out from the mixture during its early use. More oils present in the asphalt make it less grippy, and obviously oil sweating to the surface will make it much more slippery during its bedding in phase. The evolution of a new surface requires a lot of monitoring. Pirelli are putting a lot of work into studying the new track surface at Barcelona, for example, where all the pre-season testing is about to take place. You'll also see compound choices shift with new tracks over the early years as Pirelli anticipate changes in the qualities of the asphalt. The other element of track grip quality is its micro roughness. This actually involves looking at the surface of the asphalt itself and testing the graininess of its texture. The quality and texture of the track surface relates to its direct relationship with the surface and texture of the rubber of the tyre. Now this is pure chemistry. The friction between two materials is borne out from the bonding between the molecules as they push up to each other. High fidelity scanning will give Pirelli a good sense of how the tyre and track will respond to each other at different temperatures. Pulling back away from the track surface now, let's have a quick look at some of the environmental qualities that Pirelli will have to consider. 
The track temperature will have a slight impact on the sustained temperature of the tyres. In a lot of cases a cooler track is actually more helpful as it helps to balance the energy put into the tyres through the corners. Hotter temperatures can also cause the bitumen in the asphalt to deform and make the track a little less predictable. Of course Pirelli can't know what temperature the track will be on a race weekend, but the track climate will offer some insight. Speaking of climate and therefore weather, if it's likely to rain between dry periods, this will both keep the track cool and start to wash away the rubber that gets laid down onto the tarmac through the sessions. A track without a rubber line would do better for a hard compound, but only if it doesn't get too cool. Track locations also play a big part. Bahrain is often dusted with sand whipped up by winds which reduces the grip level and increases sliding through the corners. Street circuits are temporary tracks and will always feature a lot of track evolution as the cars clean up the surface of the track and stress the bitumen in ways the track rarely sees at other times of the year. So with all that in mind let's have a quick look back at some of the selections Pirelli made in 2017. Let's start with Monaco, it's got the slowest corners of anywhere, the slowest average speed and it's a temporary track. All of these factors contribute to a very low tyre energy so the softest possible compounds were chosen. Azerbaijan is a street track but unlike Monaco it has a mixture of slow corners with some medium and high speed corners and heavy braking. In this case Pirelli brought compounds one step harder than Monaco. The Catalunya circuit in Spain is a permanent heavily used race circuit with lots of high and medium speed corners, an abrasive asphalt and reliably high track temperatures. All of this contributes to high tyre temperatures which suits the harder end of the spectrum of compounds. Silverstone also has a lot of medium and high speed corners but with a higher chance of rain and more unpredictable temperatures so Pirelli opted to go one softer than they did in Spain. In Brazil Pirelli also went with the middle road of compounds as it has a rough abrasive track surface but also a lot of slow corners so there's a balance in how much the tyres are put to work. What's actually quite frustrating in looking at this is that with only five compounds and the hards all but out of action and with Pirelli only choosing three adjacent compounds there's actually only two sets of compound choices. Ultra soft, super soft, soft or super soft, soft, medium. This year Pirelli have a wider range of tyres and will not necessarily use adjacent compounds, so we should see more variation in compound choices. We're seeing this already in the first selections for 2018. Thanks again for watching this video. There may be a slightly longer gap to the next video because this week coming up is the week from hell, although by the time you've heard this it would have been the week from hell that's just happened because I record these a week in advance. Anyway, um, so yeah, there may be more than a week gap till the next information video, but hopefully not, we'll see. Um, thank you very much to my Patreons for supporting me, and thank you very much to you for watching. <laughs>